Jesus Christ. Again, it's your neighborhood pastor, Bishop Double O Anthony Johnson, bringing to you another unique word from the Lord in a time and a season like this where not everybody is ready for the true word of God. Uh, we've seen it, it is really these days that we're living in that people don't want to hear the truth. They want to do things according to their way. But I'm here today just to talk to every believer, <clears throat> every young person, and especially aspiring leaders and aspiring uh, souls that, that they want to serve God and they want to serve him in spirit and in truth. We just want to talk to you today because I believe God wants you to do things the right way. I'm always fascinated by the words of the Lord in one of his most uh, profound teaching on the mountain when he taught in Matthew and in Matthew chapter 7 as he was bringing to a conclusion his teaching. And he said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, Matthew 7 and verse 21, uh, he says, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He went on to say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name I've done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Every day that verse, these verses of scripture really resonate in my heart, in my spirit. Because I've seen a lot of great works done in the body of Christ. And I'm concerned that some of these individuals who are doing the work will not be ever accepted by God because they're not doing it according to God's pattern. So today I want to speak to you building the church according to God's pattern. I could be more emphatic and say building the church of Jesus Christ according to God's pattern. Now, this is just something laid on my spirit because God wants his church to be like him. Not like superstars, not like the culture, not like who we see around us, because there are certain things you can use to measure whether a man or a woman is living up to the will of God. When you allow, as I taught last week, the culture of the time and the culture of the season to be steeped into the activities of the church until it's hard to discern a child of God from an unsaved person. Your dress code, your mannerism, the places you go, the things you do, the way our children behave. You, you question whether or not we understand the word of God. So I want to delve into this momentarily about building the church according to God's pattern. Now, after the fundamental questions asked of Peter and the rest of the disciples, Jesus Christ said, based on Peter's confession in Matthew 16, where he says, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want to repeat that last stanza. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is it? The church. According to Colossians 1.18, Paul wrote that let me paraphrase the first uh, portion. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So here am I, 
believing and trusting by the word of God that God wants his church to look a certain way, sound a certain way, behave a certain way, adorn itself a certain way, manifest its in, in its entirety a certain way. Note when, when, when God was doing his creative work, and I would quote from Genesis 1.31, where the Bible said, when God created, he says, then God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God saw everything that he made, and it was good. So based on this verse, we are reminded of the importance that it is crucial for us to follow God's pattern, which will ultimately affect us in a critical way, leading to either our success or our failure. Therefore, God, in the scriptures I'm going to base my word to you today, God asks Moses to build a tent of meeting or a tabernacle, a sanctuary in the wilderness. And what God did, God gave Moses a pattern to build while he was with him in Mount Sinai. And according to Exodus chapter 25, we could look at verse 9. For your, for your learning and for context, you can read the entire chapter of Exodus chapter 25. Praise God. So verses 8 and 9 in particular says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. But then he emphasized something in verse number uh, 20, uh, verse number 9. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishing, just, uh, just so you shall make it. And uh, I, 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 you will understand as I go along. But God didn't stop there. In verse number 40, God reminded Moses, God said, and see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you in the mountain. He emphasizes this was critical, this was crucial, that the building, the setting up, the, the, the very furnishing, the way the priests would dress, the way the sacrifice would be offered, everything must be done according to the pattern which God showed Moses in the mountain. So what God did, he gave Moses a detailed pattern, a detailed blueprint of the tabernacle, that Moses would build the tabernacle. Moses had a graphic picture of what the tabernacle would be because the tabernacle was like a picture of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. It was a foreshadowing. It was a forecasting. So we notice then in John, in St. John chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And this word dwelt can be translated tabernacle. So in other words, we could read this. And the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. And we beheld, I want you to know this, this part is very significant. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The glory is significant because when you notice we are pushing today, we and that's why I like the way our services are flowing, and I know that God is there. You don't have to push for the glory of God to happen. Once you worship God the way God ought to be worshipped, there are going to be evident signs. So it, it, the glory is necessary. So if you notice, when the tabernacle was completed, the, the Shekinah glory of God rested upon the tabernacle. So the cloud and the glory 
signified God's approval that the tabernacle was built according to God's pattern. Now, I'm not just talking your gyration and, and the moment that the songs are finished, you sit down and you look tired and you look weary. I'm talking something that even when you sit down, the glory of God is felt. Because when the real glory of God is in a service, you can't kill that service. Because there will always be a manifestation. There will always be the presence of the Shekinah glory of God, the manifested glory of God. And that's where we're pushing things to be. It must reach to a stage that it's no longer just the hand clapping and the foot stamping. We want to so focus on the service that nobody wants to leave the service. Nobody want to do anything outside of the service. We've got a pattern our service is that when the presence of God is in the service, nobody go anywhere. Nobody does anything. It's just the presence of God being ready to manifest himself. So we, we, we see where the writer of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 5 said, we, this which we're talking about, the presence of God, it serve as a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things. As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle, for the Lord said, and I'm doing some paraphrases I'm going, for the Lord said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Are you with me now? Exodus chapter 40, verse 33 said, and he raised up the court of all, court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Verse 34 said, then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Once everything is done according to the glory of God, his glory is going to fill the tabernacle. This is not to discourage our, our praise and worship teams, our choirs, you know, our leaders in praise and worship. But when you truly are lifting up God according to the divine pattern of the sound, God reacts to a certain sound within the church. When, when Moses came from the mountain and heard the sound of the people in, in the valley, Moses was able to say, I hear a sound, but that sound is not the sound of the church. The church has a particular sound. I know it disturbs a lot of us because of our cultural tendency. That, 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 that the West Indian church, or more so the Jamaican churches, we have to get into the reggae and all kind of beats in order to reflect our culture. But the church does not reflect culture. The culture must reflect the church. The church must influence the pattern of the culture, not the culture influencing the church. So we're not building our church according to the culture. And for those of us who have traveled here to North America, it's time we get out of this concept that we have to do things to fit in with the people. You, We don't need to do anything to fit in with nobody because ultimately the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed through us. And that's why I speak to the saints. Don't you ever be discouraged. Don't you get weary in what we're doing. This is such a strategic move of God. Many people are running because they can go wherever they want to go, do whatever they want to do. They don't want to be conformed to the pattern. But the question becomes, should we change the pattern to win the people? Or should we maintain the pattern to be pleasing to God? I'd rather be pleasing to God because ultimately God has a people who will fill his church. It's not what I want, and that's my faith. I believe if you're walking in the will of God, you're going to stay. And all I'm going to do is pray and believe God by faith that God's going to send the right people to be in his church. 
So the Bible said once the tabernacle was complete, the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Thus the New Testament, amen, of our Lord Jesus Christ is the pattern of the foundation. For he build his church. Did I just read? He said unto the disciples upon this rock, I will build my church based on the revelation in Matthew 16, when he said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And of course, uh, they say, some say that thou art Elias, John the Baptist, or one of the prophet. And he said, well, that sounds good, but who do you say that I am? I want to know if you really know me. I want you to look beyond my physicality and my pulchritude. I want you to see the revelation of who I really am, the God manifested in the flesh, the invisible image of the most I God. I want to know if you have a revelation that I am the true manifestation, the most intellectual representation of God, the word made flesh dwelling among us. I want to know if you understand who I really am, that in me, who is this Jesus, dwell at all the fullness of the God and bodily. And that's why I'm not just Jesus, but I am Jesus Christ because if I was merely Jesus, I would be like the natural man, but because I am the Christos, I am the anointed and I am the anointing. Who shy? <laughs> uh, so when Peter confessed that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus Christ answered him and said, blessed art thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock, upon this revelation, upon this uh, knowledge that was not imparted to you by flesh and blood, because here is the situation. Like the other disciples say, some say, we're not talking about what some say. We're talking about what God says. The church must not be built by what some says. The church must be built according to what God says. I know we're going to get some backlash because folks are saying we aren't coming to your church because it's old fashioned. You don't have no, no vibes or whatever you're looking. We don't want vibes. We want the anointing. We want the manifestation of God. And we're going to watch how God's going to build this church. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I want some saints to believe with me that God's going to build his church. It's not what I believe. It's not what I'm just merely saying. It is the written word of God. So what we are seeing today is a lot of patterns going up. A lot of patterns within the church, the shaping of the church has drastically and dramatically changed. And when you go to the, the old, the intertestamental period, and for those of you who have studied the word of God, you realize how the scribes and the Pharisees allowed the culture to cause them to divert from the pattern uh, of which God let them to build. We've got to be careful now that we are not going according to the pattern of culture, but go according to the word of God. If it's not written and fashioned in the word, if it's not distinct, times will change, uh, styles will change, but the principles of the church will never change. So, so many things that have been brought in the church, you know, evidently it's not of God. Folks are laying into our younger believers, younger preachers who are saying we're going to do it the new age way. But according to Paul's writing to the Corinthians in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11, where Paul said, for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who just declared in Matthew 16 upon this rock, I will build my church 
and the gates of hell. I want you to know my church, not John the Baptist church, not the apostles church, not the Presbyterian church, not the day of Pentecost church. It is my church, the church of Jesus Christ. I will build my church. So let us continue. What God wants us to do in this time and this season is to continue to build the church according to the pattern. Last week, I delved into scriptures where Paul said to Timothy, the time is coming when folks are going to depart from the truth, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The time we're living in, Folks are going to be drifting from the truth, giving some enticing words and enticing uh, concepts. Folks are saying, you don't have to look that way anymore. That's old fashioned. Forget about it. So we dress down in the pulpit. Young men are walking in on a Sunday service in jeans and, and in ripped jeans and baggy clothes, not, not fitting to the tabernacle and to how God gave Moses the pattern and says, dress the priests like this. Tell Aram, that when you're entering into the temple, you must enter in, into the holies of holies a certain way. You cannot go into the holy place, the holy desk of the Lord, dressed how you want and believe God's glory is going to fall. Yeah, I know you're saying you've seen miracles and our church is packed and I'm watching this year is the year when God's going to reveal a lot of false prophets because all of them who have been dropping the pattern of the church, all of them who have been dropping the standard of the church, all our leaders who are now engaging in divorce and remarriage, all our leaders who are gain, uh, engaging in all kind of a illicit life that is outside of the context of the world. We still believe in marriage according to the word of God between one man and one woman. We still believe that we must grow up and train up our children in the way they should go, that when they're old, they will not depart from it. We still believe that the church must have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but must reprove every ungodly work that we see out there. There is a pattern for the church that we must walk in that pattern. Proverbs uh, 4 verse 18 said, but the path of the justice like a shining sun that shined ever brighter unto a perfect day. I know somebody may be watching the crowd. You may be watching what's happening, but the Lord said it in his word. He made it clear in his word, brothers and sisters, that the gate that leaded to destruction is packed but the one that leadeth to life, hallelujah to God, and few there be that find it, and few there be that walk in it. We need some saints who will uphold the church. We need some brothers and sisters who will not be enticed by the fashion of the world, that you walk into a service and you cannot feel the glory of God. We dress like the world. We speak like the world. Our praise and worship is more worldly than it is godly. Who are you glorifying? Who are you praising? Our God is a holy, sanctified God. Them gyrating and, 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 and what you see, them, them super pop Christian stars doing out there saying they are leading the church into a millennial disposition. You, we need a people to rebuke them ungodly men and women who are walking in the pulpit, acting so ungodly. The Lord said to Moses and, and, and to Joshua and the children of Israel, when you get into the promised land, don't you worship me like the heathen worship God. Don't you go in there and copy their pattern. The church is to set the standard for the world. The church has no right 
behaving in our pulpits, around the holy desk, like the world. Sisters, when you're walking out of your house, you, 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 I know you looked in the mirror, but I wonder who are you coming to church to glorify? Is it your beauty, your shape, and all that? Woman must dress right coming into the house of the Lord. Brothers, when you're coming to the house of the Lord, are you considering yourself a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people? Brothers, we should never dress down when we come to go into the holy desk to speak the word of God. Now, this is the time and the season because what we see on the outside is an indication of what's on your inside. When, you, when the fear of God is lost, when the reference to God is lost, I don't want you to fear Bishop Johnson. I don't want you to fear the mothers and the elders. I want you to have a reverential fear of God. That when you walk into the house of the Lord, you walk in with the right attitude. You walk in with the right behavior because I'm coming to worship God. I know there are many that are broken. Many that are wounded. But I've been a few times to a courthouse and it doesn't matter what you're going through. When you enter before the honorable judge, you got to behave in a certain way. Women can't dress just anyhow they want and go before the judge. The judge is ordering them to dress appropriately. What about when we come to the house of God? What about the songs we sing to the most holy God? What about the way we manifest? Yes, we heard that David danced until his skirt fell from him, but what kind of dance are we dancing in the house of the Lord? What is our own intention when we go to minister in the house of the Lord? These are critical questions because the Lord instructed Moses, build me a tabernacle according to a specific pattern which was a foreshadow of Christ coming into this world. The church has to be built. The church has to manifest. The church has to live by a certain pattern. Don't come and try to change the rule of the church, drawing from the culture, trying to convince us that historically this is how things were and therefore try to uh, make the church look as if we're not walking in the will of God and that we are, we are we're imprisoning God's people and that we're dealing with legalism and, and we're not dealing with grace. What the Lord is saying to us today, and I'm saying to every brother and every sister, because the church has a pattern, the church has a sound, the church has a certain level of manifestation. I'm speaking to God's people that we cannot treat the church the way we want to treat the church. And I'm speaking to every young minister, every young evangelist, missionary, whatever be your position in the house of God, every pastor, we got to get back to the old ancient landmark. We've got to get back to the place where we understand clearly the pattern of the church, the way of the church, the principles of the church. We cannot indulge in cultural principles and make it look as if because we're living in the culture, we've got to behave like the culture. The, uh, it is said we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Therefore, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. It's time I want to admonish the church because we're giving in. Too many of us as leaders are giving in. The pressure is intense. 
uh, folks are coming to us and we don't realize they're practical atheists. They hear the word, they, they listen to the word, they even clap to the word, but when they're finished, they have no faith in the word. They don't live the word. And so we're pressured. And when you're a church that stands up to the word and live up to the word, people try to ward you off. People try to stay away from you. But that's why Paul said to the Ephesians church, having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about you with truth, having on the breastplate, and he spoke the full armor of God. But what fascinates me with that verse, after they spoke about the family, he spoke about the wife and husband, he said, well, listen, have it after you've done everything that you should have done, just stand. I I'm impressing on the saints today to stand after you've done everything you can. After you've tried everything you can, I know you feel lonely and isolated. I know you feel as if, if things are not progressing the way we ought to progress. But weeping may endure for a night. Church, you are standing for God's will, God's purpose. Don't you cast your eyes on those who have the, the massive audiences and the massive groups. And it, it seems as if they're drawing thousands because wide is the way that lead it to destruction. Jesus Christ was teaching over 5,000 men, 5,000 men. Yes, but why is it only 120 got to the upper room? Where, 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 where is the rest? They were following him. They were listening to him. They were shouting, yes. Some of them even shortly before his crucifixion were shouting, Hosanna in the highest. But why? Only 120 ended up in the upper room. Where are the others? Over 4,900 4, uh, 4, 4, of the men were not in the upper room. And I, I just do a rough calculation there. Where were they? Where were the women and the children who usually outnumber the men? Why only 3,000 got saved right there and then? Where are the others? You would be shocked to know that the Lord deals with the remnant. We're not using this to justify anything. We're saying the church must be built according to God's pattern. God wants to bring out a people, a glorious church, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Are we willing to walk in that divine mandate? Are we willing to walk according to God's divine blueprint? Today, I'm warning the church. If we're going to build God's church, we've got to build it according to his pattern. We're not going to build it according to what the Gen Zs and the Gen Xs need. No, we're going to stay with the pattern. Make it according to the pattern that I showed you. You can never know the church in the flesh. The Lord said to Peter, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. This revelation is a divine revelation. Don't tell me what you learned at college and university. And you learned in your group. No, no, no. That cannot build the church. That's not the pattern. You got something that's different. I'm talking about the revelation of God. Flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. But my Father, which is in heaven, the church must be built according to the divine pattern. God has a pattern for the church. And we're not going to be seduced by the multicultural, vain patterns that are built all over the world. When everybody walk away from the church and say, we don't want, we don't want it your way. 
we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna um, dress down because we got to attract this generation. You have young men walking in church like a dreadlocks. We, we're not from the Rastafarian group. We are the church. Rastafarians are Rastafarian. The church is the church. We're not coming to be a model in the church. Dress modestly, appropriately in the presence of God. Sing songs that reverence God, not just for gyration, not just to sound as if you have the best voice. We, we appreciate your talent. We appreciate your giftedness. But if it's not going to glorify God, it's not good. So could we reach out to the people of God and receive this message in your spirit that God still requires us to build his church according to his divine pattern? Who am I speaking to today? Words, we got to hear this. The church must be built according to God's divine pattern. As you go forward to lead in this generation, in this dark and sinful world, remember there is a pattern after which the church must be built. This is not by power or by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. How many of us are ready to go according to God's divine pattern, lead a life, a sacred, consecrated life, separated life, holy, sanctified life, according to God's pattern. Stop becoming modern and, and saying, well, everybody's doing it. No, it, it, this is not about everybody. This is about the called. This is about the chosen. This is about those who are ready to be like Jesus Christ. Be ye holy as I am holy. So God bless you today with these few words that I speak into your spirit. Do not follow everything and everyone who calls themselves church. And let me say this. I, I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss this because it, it is critical that you hear this. I, I, you got it. That's You got to hear this. Now, listen to me. I know that God is not partial and we don't want to put the church in a, in a box. But this you must understand. It's not everyone that calls themselves, whether a preacher, a prophet, a prophetess, an apostle, whatever you call yourself, not everyone is authorized to instruct the church. Are you hearing me today? Not everybody who nowadays, being a bishop is no fancy title. It's just a, 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 a like a fleshy thing because you can buy your bishopric. You can buy your apostleship. You can you can buy, everybody's now a prophet. I, I didn't see it flaunting around like that in the Bible, but everybody's prophet this and prophet that and prophet the other. And, and everybody's apostle now and everybody is authorized. Not Listen to me, church. Not everybody is authorized to speak certain principles in your life. You must be authorized by God. And I usually, I, I can quickly measure up whether a person is truly authorized without even going to social media, listen to how they speak. If they are not within the word of God, if they are not standing for the discipline of the word of God, you know they're not of God. So you don't have to guess these days. You don't, you don't need social media. You don't need to Google them. You just listen to them carefully. Because what we want to do is not judge people according to our perception of things, but according to the word. 
So not everyone. So we're saying to the young saints, don't go patterning everyone you see out there and bring it up in church and say, well, didn't you hear what prophet so-and-so say or uh, this and so-and-so? No, no, no. Don't bring that in the church. Let's go to the word of God. If it's not written, if it's not patterned according to God's divine pattern in his word, we don't accept that in the church. Am I helping anybody here today? So as you go forward, there's a lot of social media sensation. They are getting all the likes. They're getting all the shares. You should hear it. They're getting everything. They're getting everything. You look at our pages where we're preaching truth. We're not getting the likes and we're not getting all of that because they're not, they don't want to hear truth. But give them a little sensation. Tell them a God is going to deliver you from your wicked neighbor in 10 days. And they clap and they cheer. They say, oh, I know. Because they start to name some neighbor and somebody. The devil is a liar. The devil is playing on your emotion because he knows your weakness. You're so vulnerable. You're so uh, paganistic in your mindset and in your thoughts. That everything that seems to, to, to fashion, make you feel good, appease your emotion and your laziness, your inability to fast and pray and seek God. You let them tell you, oh, God's going to deliver you. Slap your seat and tell the devil is a liar because he's going to rid you of your enemies. I, I don't care. I have a lot of enemies because I'm of God. The world doesn't like us. So that's not news. That's reality. And I know you want a lot of friends. But we too cannot walk except we agree. This is the day we're calling the church to holiness and sanctification. Don't make the church a den of thieves and a den of liars. Be serious when you approach the holy desk. If the Lord didn't say thus, do not speak that he said it. Let the fear of God rule our lives. Get from behind the camera and get on your knees. Stop being a liar that thus saith the Lord. You prophesy what the Lord did not say because you play on the vulnerable people. You play on people who just want something to satisfy their emotion. Remove from before that camera and let God speak. God have men who he has assigned to speak to us today. But we've made this a social media event. Something that everybody say what they want and we shout, we give them the likes, we give them the shares when it's nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. Stop following them. Listen, if they're, not, if they're telling you Oh, it doesn't have to be like that. We we don't have to be under all this legalistic practice. Once you hear they start to say that, you know they're backsliders. Once you hear them start to say, well, we don't need to be under this bondage because this is all bondage and we don't have to do nothing because Jesus Christ paid. Oh, yes, we know that Jesus Christ paid a total price for our salvation. But brothers and sisters, sanctification is a progressive act of every believer. Yes, come as you are. Come as a dread. Come, come, come in your tight clothes. Come in everything as you are. But you're going to be sanctified because we're progressively becoming more like Jesus Christ. And if you're truly willing and determined Paul said, I press towards the, part, the prize, the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, we've got to do some work. James said, if you have faith and you don't have the works, it's in vain. I'll show you my faith by my works. I'm saved, and i got to keep the world out of my heart, out of my mind, out of my spirit, because all that is of the world is not of God. May you be blessed today. Stop listening to everybody and make sure you are gravitating to the truth of God's word as God is building and has built his church 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. May you be blessed today and may the perpetual light of heaven fall on you. And I pray right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we're treading a dark path. The days are evil. The intent of man has grown more and more desperately wicked. Hell hath enlarged her mouth. Lord God, that those who preach to satisfy their emotions are on the increase. Lord God, those who are of the truth seems to be diminished, seems to be unrecognized. But Lord God, we pray for a breakthrough in the realm of the spirit. Lord God, we come against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world. We come against every eye thing, every thought, every disposition that exalts itself above the Most High God. And we bring it in subjection to the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we release the fire of heaven to visit our pulpits, visit our social media platform, visit Lord God. Let there be a divine visitation. And by the power and the authority of God, show yourself mighty on those that are yours. Because your word declares the Lord knows them that are his. And we who have departed from iniquity, we who have departed from the sins and the enticements of the world, Lord, let us not seem as if our repetition has been tarnished. But Lord God, show yourself mighty. Reveal Feel yourself among us, God. Lord God, shut down the camp of the enemy. Lord God, we silence every witch, every warlock, every paganistic practice that is outside of the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, loose that family, loose that wife, loose that husband, loose that son, loose that daughter, loose that brother, loose that sister, who are bound by the forces of hell and release an anointing upon our church, mighty God. Lord God, let the church be flooded with believers who are serious. Lord God, who, are, who have washed their garments white in the blood of the Lamb. Lord God, those who have released themselves from the trap of the enemy, from the attack of every demonic spirit, who would not be seduced by the Luciferic spirit that spreads itself. Loose and sin them. Lord God, cause the believers to begin to run for their lives. Run from, Lord God, deception. Run from principalities. Run from the powers of hell. Leave that place and run for your lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command every darkness, we command every powers of hell to cease. We command every demonic force that comes against us. And Father, I pray for everyone who is standing for this gospel. Protect them from the plagues of Egypt. Protect them from, uh, Lord God, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure. Lord God, protect them as you protect uh, the Israelites in the wilderness. Uh, Lord God, let them live a healthy and a strong life. Uh, Lord God, we bless our water and our food. Uh, Lord God, let nothing that enters our body, uh, Lord God, cause us to be saved sick and unhealthy. Cause our lifestyle to be according to your pattern. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release an anointing right now in the atmosphere for healing and deliverance, not just mentally, emotionally. Lord God, by your power and by your anointing, touch us, Lord. Loose us, Lord. Release us from the forces of hell. Guide our families. Oh, God, I touch them now. Lord God, we release them from the powers of depression. Release them from the powers of oppression. Lord God, those psychosomatic disorders. Lord God, I speak into their spirit. 
Lord God, that our children, we the parents, will not be bound by the fetters of the enemy. And our children will see a godly life that they can pattern. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, touch every wife, every husband, protect our families from divorce, protect our families from warring and fighting, protect our families that our children will have a legacy of peace and tranquility and that all these sicknesses and diseases that are triggered, I call Shama, that are triggered by the depression that we're entering into. I lose our families now. I lose our parents. I lose wives and husbands. I lose our children now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Touch us, Lord. And give us the peace which passes all understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release an anointing upon everyone who is listening right now. I command your life to break free. I command that every demon will be bound and every stronghold will be broken. I command that you're released into the liberty to worship God in spirit and in truth. I release you now into a new dimension of power and praise. Praise your way through your depression. Praise your way through your sickness. Praise your way through the fight. Praise your way through it. The Lord is with you. As the writer said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Brothers and sisters, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fare no evil for the Lord is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Brothers and sisters, we will not bow to the powers of the enemy, but we will dwell in the house of the Lord today and forever. I release you in the liberty of the Spirit of God. I release you to the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Let's build God's church according to the pattern in the name of Jesus Christ, I release you in a new dimension of power and anointing. And we say thank you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Somebody just give the Lord a praise right where you are as you have received your deliverance, your breakthrough. Give God praise from right where you are, right where you're sitting. Please like, share, and send this to every pastor, every leader, every young uh, aspiring believer. Please let them know, send this to them, share this, like it, comment. Let us know where you're look, listening this from and let the power of God flood this arena, this platform, so that the name of Jesus Christ can be heard locally and globally. May you be blessed and may light perpetual shine on you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Open your mics and